Okay, real quickie here today. Um, sorry, I got ahead of you and started this before I grabbed a camera. Anyway, um, GLK250 uh, ABS ESP BAS problem on the dash. Uh, ran it through my scanner and it showed right rear wheel speed sensor. Uh, went straight to the car wash because being winter, dirt, crap, whatever. Washed the wheels really good. Got behind as much as I could into the brakes, but uh, nothing. Anyway, uh, wheel speed sensor is, and I did test it, I live tested it on my, on my scanner, which I can do, and um, all the other three wheels were showing the same speed. Uh, this one was showing different. It, sometimes it would match up with the other ones, and other times it would just be like six, seven, eight RPMs off, like quite a bit uh, off, and that was going in a straight line. So... The sensor is very simple. It's an E10 reverse Torx bit, and it is right. Unfortunately, I pulled it out already. Um, this is the sensor, and it plugs in to that hole there. And there's a hole going through it that the that is where it's bolted down to. And the bolt also holds this bracket on that has the um, wheel speed sensor, which is this one, and the brake wear sensor, which is this one. So I've just pulled it out, attempting to see if I can fix it before I have to replace it. Uh, replacing is only another 10 minutes, just to trace the wires up underneath. Um, I believe they go into the wheel inner wheel well, but before I do that, I'm gonna see if I can just clean it off. And I've pulled it out Usually have to wiggle them out a little bit. They don't like to come out after a certain number of years being in there. I'm clean, gonna clean it with um, brake cleaning fluid. So brake clean, disc brake cleaning spray, and then spray some down the hole on the uh, on the little toothed wheel that this reads the uh, the signal from. I don't think that's gonna do it. I it's probably dead, but uh, we'll give this a shot and then I'll show you what it looks like on the uh, real time. Okay, so you're looking at the wheel speed sensors now. It's the one that's highlighted in blue, the right rear wheel speed sensor that we've cleaned off. And, well, this is what it looks like on the dash. Fun, fun, fun. And this should reset itself if cleaning that speed sensor did anything. But you'll see the differences between wheel speed if it's still bad. Yeah, it's still quite off the others you can see it moving at a different rate so the sensor is likely bad I'm gonna wait till I go and drive first sorry I'm trying not to bounce you around yeah it's way off of the others well, let's go in a straight line to see for sure yeah I know it's way off catches up at times and then it, it's, it backs off and then it advances itself over them. So it's, the speed sensor is bad. So you're gonna have to order one and replace it and that will be another video as soon as I can uh, get to that. Now I've got a check engine light, which is coming from, since my emissions field measures, it is showing a fuel pump implausible value for the fuel pump lovely lovely and the fun goes on I've reset that a few times and it just keeps popping back up again so it looks like uh, me and the smart car are driving to work for the next couple of days but yeah that's the uh, Now there's an axle sensor, left front axle, right front axle, left rear axle. Okay, yeah, that's just the, uh, the four. And that's within the... Get out of live data. 
the e electronic stability that's within that. And if I hit that, it's going to show the codes. Uh, you see information? Yeah, 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 read codes. There we go. One or more signals sent from control unit instrument cluster. Yeah, okay, we understand that's all hooked up to the same thing. Uh, right rear axle RPM sensor. It's unplausible values of RPM sensors on real axles and consequential faults because of it. And I cannot clear those. Those will not clear while the fault is still active. And it also, apparently, <laughs> takes out your run-flat indicator when that happens, um, which I didn't know. But uh, the run-flat indicator no longer works when the uh, wheel speed sensor isn't uh, working. Don't know why. Um, I've test checked all of the tire pressures and they're all fine. I didn't even know I have, these are the winter tires. Uh, the rims I bought were from someone else. I bought used rims and put winter tires on them. Um, I never had to reprogram wheel speed sensors. I don't even know that these rims have wheel speed sensors in them. And this has never popped up before, so I'm assuming it's got to be part of the uh, ABS and everything. So anyway, um, yeah, we'll be with that when we replace the sensor. I'll be back to you in a few days or whenever I get it. Um, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, uh, make any comment you want. It helps me get found on YouTube. No comments, no find, no show up, no views. Uh, thanks for watching. Okay, so back to where we left off in the last video. <laughs> of course, it's freezing rain today. And I'm doing this. Anyway, uh, wheel off. Um, three little plastic pull pins. Flathead screwdriver, pull out the middle on that one, that one, and that one. This is right rear wheel speed sensor. And then you have uh, 10 millimeter plastic nuts. There's a bunch of them to remove. I think there's like six. There's one, two, three, four. Is that it? And five. I'm gonna pull those out and then we'll pull the wheel liner out and that will get us to access for that uh, wheel speed sensor. Wire the other side of it, it goes up under and plugs into a body uh, connector. So I'm gonna take those bolts out and be back in two secs. Okay, so on top of the previously aforementioned screws, there's also two plastic push pins under here and one uh, torque screw, I believe it's a T15. What is it? It is a T... Come on. 20. Under the back lip here. And now I'm going to pull this whole thing off. Gently. <laughs> and I'll uh, be back in a second. I'll figure out the best way to pull it off. Um, because I'm not sure at the moment which end should come out first to make it easier. Okay, I'm finding that peeling the... <laughs> The outer edge of the liner with these little fingers on it out first is quicker or the easiest. But again, I'm working with frozen plastic right here, so it's not bending that much, and I'm trying not to bend it. So, uh, back to front, front of car, back of car, uh, get these fingers out and work them along. And it's at the end, it's, it's a real pain in the butt, honestly, to get them up. Um, but anyway, have it out in a few minutes back in a sec okay here it is off what a pain <laughs> honestly probably just because it's freezing out um, well all the dirt and stuff under here from winter can't wait to blast that off anyway that's not where we are um, here's the connector up here this is the uh, brake pad wear sensor and the ABS um, wheel speed sensor are both in there and they're kind of uh, clipped together and then pushed in so we're going to go back to like we did at the beginning of the video and take an E11 Torx, which is the reverse Torx, and take that bolt right there out. And that pulls the sensor out, and we just have to fire, follow the wire up. And uh, I'll be back in two seconds. Uh, we have to take the clip off, but I'll show you that in a sec. 
Okay, so the E11 Torx bolt is out that holds the sensor and this little um, hold down plate in. And you can obviously unclip it from that hold down plate, follow it up, and it just, there's little rubber grommets that pop in to these little slots up here. And it goes around and I believe it is this one. I think it's the outer one. To get this off the clip, there is a little metal and yeah, let me see if I can show you with a screwdriver. There's a little metal bar pin. You push that bar in like that. And then pull the clips out toward you. And then they're going to be sistered together like this. And you just pull them apart. Okay. So we're going to grab, uh, just take this the rubber connectors out of the plastic and there we go let's go grab our new one back in a sec okay new sensor oops new sensor old sensor and before I put these together along this rubber seal I'm just gonna put a little synthetic grease a little dielectric grease on both of them the old one and the new one and then we'll clip them together and where is it? They just clip together at the neck there. They just simply push together. So I'm going to put a little bit of grease around there and then we'll pop that back in. Actually, I should put you guys on a tripod to watch this. Give me one sec. I've got no rain now, so I can do that. Okay, so hopefully none of us are in each other's way here. A bit of synthetic grease again on the rubber seal that goes around the lip of the connector and the ABS connector. And then this one is going to just notch into this one and they click together like that. And push in and when you push in that little spring tab that little spring wire should pop back out and lock them in place now we're simply going to feed this well it would be nice if it wasn't so <laughs> it was a little less bent bendy <laughs> whatever it'll straighten out over time When's this supposed to come down? No, this one. Sorry. Hopefully I'm not in your way. It's feeding it down this channel. It clips this rubber grommet clips in there. Let's feed that a bit more wire. this ever has to come out again because <laughs> wheel speed sensors after several years in the wheel get kind of nasty don't put it down near the sensor end put it up here where it's going to go through the hub and I'm going to slide that back in you've seen this already in the beginning of the video slide that back into the hub hole and let's try and get you over top of this so you can see. Can I? I don't know. Maybe. Turn Mr. Camera Mount. I'm just going to leave it running because I'm trying not to waste time before it starts raining again. Apologize for my poor <laughs> camera work. I do the best that I can. So here, see the mount. You put the sensor in, 
and the mount goes over top and bolts in over top of it. You go under there. Sorry. that to about 10 foot pounds that's about it then clip this plastic part or the rubber part into the wire and well that's kind of bendy but whatever I'm sure it'll relax once it sits around for a bit um I think that's it I think we are done so we're gonna throw everything back together and uh go for a test drive and fingers crossed we have no more ABS ESP problems back in a sec oh tip on this fender liner the front lower part right down there that goes in first that'll make it so much easier for you and then uh, backs and then push the front in or actually in reverse Putting it back in in the back way, I might put the fingers in first, but I will let you know which way worked best for me. Okay, I've got my scanner hooked up to read the right rear wheel speed sp sensor. As you remember in the video, it was not keeping up with or lagging behind or advancing forward of the other wheel speed sensors. And I saw the code on, but it should probably clear once the wheel speed is good. Let's hope not back into the bush. <laughs> There's nothing back there, dummy. Sorry, there's traffic. gone out <laughs> so we're going to go on a drive I'm going around a corner so the wheel speed would have been a little bit different I'm trying to keep my eyes on the road and not watch this so it'll pop up on the dash if it's not um, again my check engine light is for that field measures it is an implausible uh, fuel pump pressure of the fuel rail which is ridiculously high <laughs> like I mean ridiculously high it's something like it's supposed to be between 280 some 250 and 280 bar and it's at times going to 1200 bar which doesn't make sense. It must be the sensor up there, but that is under the warranty. So uh, that's going in tomorrow for that. Hitting the brakes, nothing feels weird like it did when the speed sensor was gone before the brake. Braking felt weird. You can feel like, uh, it's kind of hard to explain, uh, like the pedal was going further down. Um, it was kind of trying to think of what it was doing and the steering felt a little bit, uh, off as well. I guess the yaw, yaw sensor and the steering uh, angle sensor are all in that same ballpark, are all being fed the same information. So uh, once that stuff's not all working in tandem with each other, they all kind of get a little bit loopy, especially when it's electric power steering. So it looks like this issue has been solved. Uh, I'm going to drive for another five minutes. If anything else pops up, I will record it and let you know but otherwise it looks like this is uh, we're all good here 
Again, if this stuff helps you, just uh, leave a comment, like, uh, whatever. Comments are the best because it does help you get found on YouTube. Uh, I hate asking for this, but uh, that's how the algorithms go. The more comments are in on a video, the uh, more it gets shown on the uh, sidebar and recommended to other people. Nobody comments on it. No one gets to see it. Anyway, uh, if this helps you, uh, let me know. Thanks for watching. And a quickie final addition to the uh, <laughs> whole ABS ESP idiocy. Um, check engine light, which did was a code for, um, I'll put the code down in the description. I can't remember the number, um, but it was a fuel pump um, implausible pressure code. And once the ABS ESP and all the, you know, the wheel speed sensor related lights went out, about two or three starts later the check engine light went out and i did again i thought it was uh related to the field measure thing the fuel pump is under warranty under this field measure i went to the dealership and they read the second code which i had which was um it couldn't be read by my code reader and there it wasn't even in their books they called germany and found it in german and the other fuel pump related code was right wheel speed sensor so the ESP that controls, um, part of the ESP that controls uh, power to your engine output and throttles your engine so that you don't, uh, have, so you have traction, you have wheel, no wheel spin, also has a fuel pump component in it and it triggers. So anyway, a wheel speed sensor will trigger your check engine light because it's going to cause a um, fuel pump issue or make the fuel pump think that it, Ridiculous, I know, but it's uh, part of the ESP system is the fuel pump, the fuel pump pressure. Maybe just in the diesels, I don't know. Makes no sense to me, but uh, it does at the same time make sense. So anyway, my check engine light, there's a long way to say my check engine light was related to the uh, wheel speed sensor. And after a few miles of driving, a few starts, that was gone. And the dealer said that is exactly what it was. And uh, there you go, Bob's your uncle. Um, if your ESP, BAS, ABS, all that stuff comes on and is accompanied with a check engine light, uh, the check engine light is probably part of the problem and not something separate like I assumed it was. Anyway, thanks for watching.